Hello and welcome. Thank you everybody so much for coming. Um, this will be Bob Arledge's lecture and he's going to be telling you about health, wellness, and fitness, and anything else. Well, I appreciate you coming and uh, I, I think you'll learn a few things here today. Um, as you know, uh, in April, 1st of April, I returned from Poland. I competed in the uh, World Senior Olympics in uh, Turin, Poland, and I uh, took fifth place. And I've got some slides after this lecture. If you want to stay and see about five minutes of uh, Polish slides, uh, you can do that. If you're sick of the, you want to get out and, and leave, you can do that. I won't be offended, but I'm going to wait to show the uh, slides of Poland after my lecture is finished. But uh, anyway, I won the uh, World Senior Olympics in uh, Malaga, Spain, and I didn't realize just uh, how difficult it is to win a, a world-type uh, event championship. So uh, now I appreciate it a lot more. I didn't understand what I had done, uh, really, and it, uh, now, I, now I appreciate uh, pretty much th that I was able to win that. So uh, if you want to stay late after I'm finished, uh, we'll show the Poland slides. But uh, I'm going to begin by just sort of giving my testimony. Uh, <clears throat> spent 30 years and five months in the military, the Air Force, as a matter of fact. And in the military, we are required to maintain a certain level of fit and fitness. Uh, we're tested uh, in running a two-mile run and push-ups, pull-ups, that type of thing, a couple of times a year. And uh, uh, so we, had, we were required to maintain a level of fitness. I know uh, Bonnie, she's a retired uh, nurse from the Air Force, and you were required to do that too, right? So uh, anyway... Uh, after I retired from the Air Force in 1988, I gained 25 pounds, and I went to the doctor, and he said, hey, you're, you're pre-diabetic. He said, you've got some heart irregularities, your blood pressure's way high. And I said, yo, I didn't know that. So uh, I met an old friend who I knew from college. We were both pole vaulters at Otterbein University, as a matter of fact. And he invited me to come to Youngstown to compete in the Ohio Senior Games which some of the people here at Otterbein have done. And uh, I went and I failed miserably. I couldn't even get off the ground. I thought it'd be like riding a bicycle, you know, that could, could go right back and do it. I couldn't. And uh, I vowed then to be a competitive pole vaulter, and, uh, but I never dreamed that I would win uh, national championships and actually a world championship. So it's been an interesting, uh, it's been an interesting uh, uh, 16 years that I've been doing this. Uh, so uh, Bob, Bob Bounds is on the, the video back there. If you'll show my little video, uh, this is a, uh, a video of a National Senior Games. I'm going to the National Senior Games this July in Pittsburgh. Uh, I'm going to be going to the National Senior Games this July. It's in Farsi. سال خورده شاید تحقیقات جدید با عدد و رقم نشون میده که سن تندرستی اینها بسیار کمتر از سن شناسنامهیش بود My age is 77 and my fitness age is 54 I'm 67 and my fitness age was 54 I'm 74 years old but the fitness test says I'm 46 در دهکده این مسابقات هر گوشه که می رفتم یکی داشت در مورد آزمون سن تندرستی هم هست تستی که اینجا از اون حرف میزنن یک پرسشنامی اینترنتی است که محققان نروژی و آمریکایی در چند سال اخیر خیلی روی اون کار کردن و مدعی هن که میتونه سن تندرستی رو تخمین این تست رو به صورت آنلاین همه از همه جای جهان میتونن انجام بدن و اطلاعاتش جمع میشه توی یک دیتابیس و یک جایی که میتونن دانشمند در مورد اون تصمیم بگیرن اما جالب تر از هر تستی داستان شگفت انگیز بعضی از این ورزشکارهاست دو میدانی رو 
تولد تازه از پنجاه سالگی شروع کرد. شوهرم که فوت کرد همه گفتن تکلیف تو با بقیه زندگی معلوم کرد. اول رفتم توی تین سافت بار ولی دیدم اونجا همچین از مدال خبری نیست اما من مدال میخواستم. واسه همین اومدم توی دو میدانی. 66 سالم اما تست تندرستی که دادم گفت 24 25 سالم. گفتم کی بعدش میاد؟ نتایج تست تندرستی حیرت آوره. چیزی که حتمیه اینه که ورزش تاثیر چشمگیری بر سلامتی تندرستی این افراد داره. بعد از چند روز بودن در دکره این مسابقات تردیدی برام باقی نموند که اینها راز جوانی رو پیدا کرد. اما هنوز برام جالبه که بدونم تا چه سنی میشه اینطوری رقم But uh, another story, and this was in the Reader's Digest, so you know it's true. <laughs> uh, this is a man who competed in the senior games. Uh, he, had, uh, he went to the doctor, he had heart disease, he had diabetes, he was overweight, he was depressed, and he was, and he was having trouble with his family and, and marriage, and uh, he considered suicide. And so he thought, well, if I do that, my insurance policy won't, won't work, so my kids won't get the money. So he said, I'll st- I said, I'm going to run until my heart gives out. So he started that. He ran as hard as he could until he collapsed, and uh, he didn't die. He, he did that every day. And finally, he got to realize, he said, hey, I'm, I'm running a half a mile, and I'm feeling better. And, uh, And he, his diabetes started to improve, his heart started to improve, he was losing weight, and he became competitive as a senior athlete. So that's a true story where uh, exercise is like medicine for us at our age. If you don't exercise and if you don't move, uh, bad things happen. When you do exercise and move, good things happen. So uh, uh, the United States, uh, dollar for dollar probably has the worst health care in the world. Uh, we're ranked 34th in the world by the uh, World Health Organization and the Bloomberg, uh, uh, Bloomberg uh, Corporation who ranked, uh, they put us at 39th in the nation. Uh, compared to Canada, New Zealand, and Australia, America has the lowest life expectancy, highest suicide rate, highest diabetes rate, highest heart disease rate, twice as high as these other co- industrialized countries, and uh, highest chronic disease in the world. So, so we're, we're doing something wrong here in this country. And uh, our health care is uh, pharmacy driven. It's based on, you go to the doctor, they give you a pill. And, uh, but a lot, they don't talk to you about lifestyle changes, nutrition, and exercise. That's uh, just quicker and easier to give you a pill. Um, so uh, pharmaceutical companies, uh, uh, they're not bad, but they control, control the advertising and medical schools and TV ads and stuff. So I don't expect a change. That's, they're making money doing that. But uh, we do have the best uh, pharmaceuticals for treating uh, Uh, you know, infections and things like that. We're number one in the world. And as far as uh, uh, our medical system uh, with acute care like and replacement surgeries and things like that, we're, we're number one. So we are high in certain areas, but low, very low in other areas. As a matter of fact, I don't know if you knew this, but the most hospital beds per capita is in uh, Buffalo, New York. And that's not... Uh, Uh, the reason that is, Canadians come across and get their hips done, their knees replaced, and their shoulders replaced, all their joints, and some of the surgeries that they want because in their country with socialized medicine, they have to wait a long time. So uh, Buffalo uh, sees a lot of Canadians, uh, the United States treats a lot of com- Canadians. <clears throat> okay. Uh, uh, 
So on, on television, though, you know, the pharmaceutical companies, they'll have these ads and it'll say, uh, take this or, and it'll make you better. And, and people go to their doctor and they say, I want this medicine. I want this thing I saw on TV. It's even gotten into the uh, veterinary medicine. Uh, you know, you see the ads, give this to your dog and it'll be a great dog. And uh, so this, uh, this one lady, uh, she walked into the vet's office she had with her pet duck. And uh, she said, oh, doctor, uh, my pet duck is unconscious. See what you can do for it. He examined the duck and he said, well, uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Jones, your pet uh, duck Daffy is dead. She said, oh, you don't know, you can't say that. You haven't done any tests or anything. I think he's just unconscious. And uh, so the lab looked over, to his, uh, the uh, vet looked over his big Labrador retriever and he had him come over and the lab jumped up, put his paws on the table and, and he sniffed a little bit and he looked at the doc and, and uh, shook his head. And uh, so then he called over uh, his uh, cat and uh, the cat jumped up and walked around two or three times and, and it shook its head and jumped down. And he said, well, he said, well, I'm sorry, Mrs. Jones, your, your, uh, your, uh, your duck is dead. And uh, he said, that's be $350. She said, oh, how, how can you charge that? You, just to tell me my duck is dead. He said, well, my fee to tell you that would have been 25 to $50, but you requested uh, a lab uh, test and a CAT scan. He said each of those were 150. <laughs> so that's sort of the way it is in our, uh, in our medical system. Uh, we, we expect all these tests and everything, and a lot of, them, a lot of these tests are uh, done for legal reasons. Tests just to prevent being sued. So uh, anyway, there are a lot of healthy, the world's healthiest countries, I'll name you the top five, Spain, Italy, Iceland, Japan, and Okinawa, and Switzerland, those are the top five. And in Spain, they adhere to the Mediterranean diet, which is uh, seafood, a lot of vegetables, olive oil, and they're an outdoor type people. They exercise, ride bikes, and get outdoors a lot. And in Italy, uh, especially uh, the island of Sardinia, they're, they're actually the number one in uh, uh, life expectancy. They have more 100-year-old people. Uh, and the same way, they're farmers and shepherds, and they, they uh, are family-oriented, church-oriented, and they uh, are uh, uh, exercisers. They're out in the sun. Uh, and in Iceland, uh, they're high because they eat a lot of seafood, a lot of salmon and cod and mackerel and that type of thing. And that gives them their omega-3. Uh, omega-3 is a uh, healthy fat that uh, softens the blood vessels and uh, uh, it, helps, it helps the uh, cardiovascular system. We have to have fat. That also, uh, the, uh, the omega-3 things uh, uh, boost the uh, good cholesterol that we have, the uh, HDL. It increases the level of HDL, which is a good cholesterol. People think, well, we, we don't need fat. We do, we can't live without fat, but there's a good fat and bad fat, and the seafood gives us the uh, good fat. Uh, now, in there's a, a um, I, I've been to Iceland before, and, and they do, that's their main diet. Uh, when I was stationed in Alaska, I used to, I've been, took about 12 TDYs to Iceland. R really fun place to go, it's a beautiful country. But they do, their diets are, they don't eat a lot of bad food. Uh, here in the, in the United States, our, uh, our diet, uh, well, the system works against, on TV, they advertise all these fast food places and, uh, and uh, we have options to eat a lot of bad things. And, and you'll see even in our uh, uh, people who get food stamps and, and that type of thing, uh, they're heavy people. And uh, they've learned that uh, Twinkies taste a lot better than kale. They're not, they're not being taught to eat the right foods. We're, we're giving them food uh, opportunities to buy food, but they're not, they don't know what good foods are. Uh, so that's, that's not helping them. Now here in the United States we have, uh, oh, one other thing, Okinawa, they're very, they have a lot of uh, hundred year old people and the same thing there, they eat seafood and vegetables, they're farmers, and uh, they ride bicycles. And also in my military, I've been to Okinawa and, uh, in 1975. It, it, uh, that was right, or 1957 rather, and that was soon after the war, and they were pretty beat up then, but um, 
they, they were still uh, 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 rice farmers and that type of thing, and they lived outdoors. Uh, so uh, that's uh, the one other thing, they eat seaweed. Uh, Japan and Okinawa, they eat sea, sea, seaweed, which has fucoidin. That's an element or a mineral that uh, is w one of the top cancer fighters in the world. And some of the cancer centers now give uh, their cancer patients seaweed extract to drink. And uh, I, I, that's one of the things I do. I buy this product that's called Limu, and I drink a shot glass full, full of it every morning. It's a, and I go to the, uh, I shop at Dorothy Lane, and they, they have a, a uh, sushi bar, and I always get some seaweed and eat it. I don't really like it, but I know it's good for me, so I eat it. And, uh, all right, that's enough on that. Uh, uh, here in the United States, we have one pocket of superagers, people who live to be a hundred more than any other place. It's in Loma Linda, California, and these are Seventh-day Adventist people, and they are, uh, uh, it's a, a Christian sect that uh, they don't smoke, they don't drink, they're very family-oriented, and they don't eat red meat, they do eat seafood, but, uh, and they're exercising a lot, and they're outdoor exercising. So, uh, and their life is centered around their church. And one other thing I found a study, they do studies on everything, but I found two or three studies that says where uh, people who attend church regularly uh, tend to live longer. You can Google that and find it yourself, but uh, so uh, these people are very regular in their church attendance. And uh, <clears throat> uh, anyway, uh, one other thing, I just kind of throwing out a little information here. Uh, it says that pot smokers over 50 uh, have 30% increased chance for heart heart attacks. Now, you know, we've just recently uh, legalized pot, and it's almost uh, glamorized as a as a uh, treatment for certain things, and uh, but it's not, uh, you know, we, we treat people who smoke cigarettes like they're evil, and, and uh, but here pot smoking, you know, it's it's not a good thing either. But we we accept that and say, hey, this is okay. I don't understand that. Uh, but anyway, uh, we're slowly changing a little bit in the way, way we approach heart disease and uh, and the high blood pressure. Uh, the director of car cardiology in the University of Florida, they said uh, uh, lifestyle changes with some medications is better than surgical intervention. You know, that means you know, doing bypass and stuff like that. Uh, heart disease is the number one cause of death, and uh, so that's why I'm concentrating on that today. The uh, Cleveland Clinic, they've, they relate heart disease, they say 90% of heart disease is lifestyle related not hereditary. Some of us are predisposed to heart disease, but they say the lifestyle, with lifestyle changes, nutrition and fitness, you can uh, possibly overcome that. And uh, now if you look in your handout, go to the Mayo Clinic uh, uh, water, uh, uh, it says Mayo Cl Clinic drinking water prevents heart attacks. You all have that? Uh, the Mayo Clinic cardiologist determined that heart attacks can be triggered by dehydration. Drinking water at certain times maximizes its effectiveness on the body. They say you drink two glasses of water in the morning when you wake up. We're totally dehydrated after sleeping at night. And uh, uh, so I do that when I get up. I, I, I still take a couple of medications. I used to take about eight, but as I've become more and more fit, uh, I'm down to two, and I want to get rid of one of those next time I see my doctor. My blood pressure medication. My blood pressure is actually getting low, and I'm going to tell him I don't need this. Um, uh, so, uh, if you take a glass of water with your medicine in the morning, a full glass, eight ounce glass, then have a glass with your breakfast, you get the two glasses of water that you need, and then you drink a glass 30 minutes before bed. That helps your digestion, but it also uh, 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 hydrates your body before you go to sleep. Um, actually, uh, I do that, and I also eat a banana before I go to bed, and we'll talk about that later. Bananas are rich in magnesium and potassium, which is, uh, helps regulate the heartbeat. And uh, so that's, 
and you see here it says most heart attacks occur between 6 a.m. and noon. And uh, uh, so I think a lot of that maybe is because you wake up, you're dehydrated, you start doing things, and you trigger a heart attack. I, that's just my thinking. Uh, so uh, you can read the rest of that on the, the bottom there, talking about symptoms of heart attack. Uh, besides left arm pain, it can be intense chain, uh, chin pain. Sometimes you can have a tense pain between your shoulder blades. That can be a heart attack coming on. Uh, a nausea and sweating, just uh, sick to your stomach. Some people, that's all they have. They just feel sick to their stomach and they're having a heart attack. And it says if you are having a heart attack, call 911 and, uh, or call someone who lives nearby and, and uh, take an aspirin and sit near the front door and wait for the people to arrive. They tell you not to lie down. Uh, all right, uh, now, uh, uh, here's a couple other research articles that I've, I've done that I think are interesting. If you do 30 minutes of moderate aerobic exercise four times a, uh, a week for 30 minutes, you decrease your chance for a, a heart attack by 39%. That's a big number. So they're, they're saying just spend 30 minutes of uninterrupted exercise, moderate exercise. That could, what would include walking, uh, which they call power walking, which requires a wire, uh, arm swing, 100, 100 paces a minute, which is about like this. about 100 paces a minute. If, if you do that 30 minutes every day, you will decrease your uh, risk for a heart attack by 39%. Now, uh, that's, that's not an awful lot to do. Uh, but people say, oh, I walk all the time. But they stop. It's, it has to be uninterrupted to get your pulse up and get your, uh, you, know, you always want to ha have a physician's clearance before you do any type of start an exercise program. But, so that's, that's really a good recommendation for you right there. If you can walk 30 minutes uninterrupted with the arm swing, 100 paces a minute, you're decreasing your chance for a heart attack by almost 40%. Okay, and uh, uh, another thing, it said uh, uh, 12 months of moderate exercise, aerobic exercise every day, decrease the uh, uh, ri risk for Di type 2 diabetes by 50 percent. And you know, if you have type 2 diabetes, you have uh, a real high risk for uh, heart disease. As a matter of fact, most, most diabetes, di diabetics uh, have heart disease. Uh, and here's another little uh, research study I saw. It says 85-year-olds who walk just one hour a week versus 85-year-olds who didn't walk they had significant benefits to their health, their heart, and other things. So uh, the British Medical Journal, uh, there was an article in there that said seniors who pump iron do uh, progressive resistive exercises, uh, they have a 40% uh, uh, lower death rate from heart disease than uh, uh, over their peers who don't do resistive exercise. Now, you can go to the YMCA and they'll put you on the uh, arm machines that they have, and uh, you can start out, you can do uh, uh, three sets of 10, like 30 repetitions. But uh, in this uh, British Medical Journal study, they found that uh, people who lifted weights and had their quadriceps, these are the muscles here in front of the ones that we get up and down with, they found those who had normal quadriceps strength had a greater recovery rate after a heart attack than those who had weak quadriceps, and the YMCA has a machine that you can sit on and do that. I, I, and I do that twice a week. I, I uh, pump iron twice a week. <laughs> I don't lift a lot of weights. I do repetitions. Um, and uh, so there's a, so the YMCA has all, all the machines to build your arms and your legs if you want to do it. Uh, another Cleveland Clinic study, it says uh, they just, found that most heart disease is preventable due to lifestyle changes, diet, normal weight, and daily exercise. And, uh, and, and they followed up, they said lifestyle changes are, are often more effective than stents or bypass surgery 
or medications. Uh, and uh, so the New England Journal of Medicine, they found that patients with uh, stable ischemic, that means low, poor heart flow to the heart, uh, who are on medication uh, do no better than those who are adhered to lifestyle changes. So we're, we're talking about here, exercise is medicine for your heart. I'm not saying quit taking medicine, don't do that, but add the exercise and, and like I'm, I'm gonna tell them I'm, I don't want the blood pressure medication anymore because uh, as I've gotten more and more fit, I don't need it. I'll be, I'll be 90 uh, Saturday. That's a big number too. <laughs> It, but uh, like I said, the, uh, uh, I, I feel probably my fitness age is probably about 68 or 70. And, uh, and that, that cuts both ways. There are a lot of 60 or 70 year olds whose uh, uh, fitness age is 90. So it go, goes back both ways. You can see uh, how you can see that. Uh, anyway, uh, I was going to read something that, uh, from my personal observations as a physical therapist when I was, my career was with physical therapy. I never encountered anyone getting better from high blood pressure, type 2 diabetes, or heart disease just by taking prescription drugs. Our muscles and fat cells are not silent bystanders to exercise. Exercise produces messenger chemicals that speed out across the body. Uh, spread out across the body. And they can lower uh, the inflammation rate in their body and slow down metabolism or slow it up or speed it up. And uh, exercise is also an excellent way to detoxify your body. So uh, anyway, uh, another little tip, uh, uh, we found that uh, extended sitting has become the new cigarette smoking. And we sit, uh, Many of us sit 15, 16 hours a day. Uh, we we uh, we sit after we get up, watch television, get in the car to drive. You're sitting, and uh, you uh, watch television during the day. You watch television in the evening, and you sit at your computer. And it doesn't take long to head up to 15, 16 hours a day, and that is a problem. And so they say, uh, uh, get up. Uh, do exercise blasts every 30 minutes. And I try to do it. If I'm watching TV, when an ad comes on, I'll stand up, either walk around a little bit or, or do uh, toe raises, stand by the chair and do some toe raises, just for 60 seconds. And you can do that or just stand up and sit down two or three times. And that, that's a form of exercise. So just try to avoid sitting for a, an extended period of time. Break it up. Uh, get up, uh, you know, like every 30 minutes, get up and do something. March standard for a, while the TV ends on, just marching in place. Okay, uh, now go to your handout on page one. Uh, we're talking about uh, foods that help lower the blood pressure. Uh, it's also the same foods uh, are good for your heart. And uh, I, I want to just review some of those. Um, uh, these are foods that produce nitri uh, nitric oxide in our body. Uh, nitric oxide uh, is what relaxes the blood vessels. It uh, lowers your blood pressure. When you lower your blood pressure, your heart doesn't have to work as hard. So these are foods that uh, they, they produce a gas in your body that relaxes the blood vessels. And they're some of the best foods you can eat. Uh, you can see ban avocados, uh, bananas, they have both magnesium and potassium. I eat two bananas a day. I don't, like I say, I don't particularly care for those, but I eat one in the morning and then one at night before I go to bed because it does have this ability to, to uh, uh, help your, your muscles re uh, pump better, work better, and it opens up the blood vessels so that you have uh, better blood flow. Uh, blueberries, they are a... Uh, they're a wonderful uh, uh, antioxidant, cancer fighter, uh, and they, they produce uh, nitric oxide. Watermelon, it's another one. It produces, uh, uh, it opens up your blood vessels when you eat watermelon. Beets, um, now these, these are, uh, my three, my three uh, bees that I talk about are bananas, blueberries, and beets. 
Those are the three really crucial foods that I try to eat every day. Uh, I keep a jar of pickled beets in the refrigerator and I eat a couple of them for a snack and then I drink beet juice. Athletes now, a lot of these senior athletes, I learned that you know, I'd see them drinking this red juice. I said, what is that? They said, beet juice, because it, uh, it opens up your blood vessels and makes your heart work better. So uh, 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 then broccoli, kale, onions, sauerkraut. Uh, we need that fermented food uh, for just for our uh, digestive system too, our intestines, where our immune system is produced. Uh, that helps that. Uh, spinach, it has magne magnesium and potassium. Uh, it's a superfood. Uh, uh, spinach is a superfood, and I'll do that also. I get a package of frozen spinach and just uh, throw it in the pot, cook it, and I'll eat it. With, I put some garlic in there. Um, you can read the rest of these. Uh, mackerel and salmon and tuna, they're all very high in uh, omega-3 plus magnesium and potassium. And then you see that 70% dark chocolate. That does, cocoa, uh, a high level of cocoa does open up your blood vessels and it's good for you. But you don't, uh, that doesn't mean you can eat a Milky Way. That doesn't do, not, not do you any good. It's gotta be the dark chocolate. It's gotta be at least 70% dark. Um, uh, cinnamon and ginger, uh, they are vasodilators and if you want a nice healthy beverage, uh, green tea with cinnamon and ginger in it, it's, it's a good uh, healthy beverage. Um, garlic, um, it's an infection fighter. It's been used as a medication for thousands of years to treat a lot of different diseases. And, here, and then turmeric, um, uh, curry, uh, turmeric is the plant and curry comes from the root of the turmeric plant. It's that orange powder. And that is um, uh, a powerful antioxidant. As a matter of fact, in India, which is a poor country, their diet is not that great. They have the lowest rate of dementia in the world. So researchers went in and studied and they tried to find out why that was. It's because they eat curry. It's a spice they use in all their food. And so, uh, uh, if you want, we want to be serious about uh, uh, preventing dementia. That's one. That's one uh, food that you can add to your diet. And olive oil, virgin olive oil. That's cook with that over the other things. That's that's also uh, uh, it has uh, produces nitrous oxide. Uh, and then skim milk, uh, yogurt. Almonds and pistachios. Uh, there was a Harvard study done using like oh, 30,000 people in this study, and it went over uh, like a 13-year period. It's one of the biggest studies I've seen. And they uh, they had their uh, group eat uh, pistachios or walnuts and almonds, and in the other group they didn't eat nuts. And the ones who ate pistachios, almonds, or walnuts every day, like just a handful. They had uh, uh, like a, a lot less cancer, a lot less heart disease, and uh, these nuts uh, provide a lot of omega-3, and they do produce uh, nitrous oxide. So uh, uh, now the, the oily cashews, that would not be so good. It's real salty nuts. But uh, the, uh, and when I was doing some of my research, you, you know, there, that's, there's a hymn called, there is a balm in Gilead. That balm was uh, from the pistachio tree. They would take the bark and strip it, and they'd make a, a, a jelly out of it, and they would use it for uh, skin lesions and other medical problems. So I just thought that was sort of a fun little thing to learn. Uh, okay. Now, uh, I, want, I want to just... Uh, Doctor, uh, we had a doctor here called Amy Richardson. She'd probably be 110 now if she was still alive, I don't know, but she was one of the early female physicians and she said she had a hard time finding a place to work after she graduated from medical school. So she really got involved in nutrition uh, type things and uh, she wrote a book and I bought it from her and it was, it's an excellent book, I still have it. But uh, I went to her uh, when I first came here 10 years ago, I, I told her, I said, I said, you know, I have uh, uh, some heart tachycardia sometimes and blood pressure and, 
and that type of thing. And I said, what, what's your recommendation? She said, well, drink more water and start eating uh, these foods rich in uh, 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 potassium and uh, magnesium. And I've gone through some of these foods that, that are rich in potassium and magnesium. And, uh, and all at once I realized I wasn't having the, the rapid pulse, the irregular pulse. And I started to notice an improvement. So I give Dr. Amy Richardson pre, uh, kudos for uh, putting me on the right path without drinking more water and eating foods that are high in uh, potassium and uh, magnesium. Now, uh, mag what? What? Okay, her, uh, her book is in the library, Dr. Amy Richardson. It's a good book to read. I mean, she goes into a lot of herbs that are helpful, and it's a, it's a good book. Thanks, Jim. I didn't know it was in there. All right. Okay. Uh, so let me see here. Uh, I think that's that's all I'm going to cover right now. Uh, I do want to take this other, this uh, helpful health hints, hip, helpful tips, and I want to cover a few of them with you. You can get that, uh, and uh, you can read this later when you get home. But the med number one, the Mediterranean diet is a, also a dimension fighter, and the Mediterranean diet is uh, an area where people live a real long time that use it. It's, uh, the diet's high in raw veggies, olive oil, garlic, and seafood. And there, are, uh, these people that use the Mediterranean diet, that live in the Mediterranean, they're, they're also physically active. So I think that's uh, important. And uh, the third one, it says, food additives and MSG have shown to increase the risk for Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease. They're considered by uh, the, neuro, the Cleveland Clinic, uh, actually came out with that, and they said they're neurotoxins to the senior brain. So avoid uh, MSG. I know uh, uh, the, uh, some fast food places put MSG in their food. Uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken does. I, I used to like it, but I don't eat it anymore. And uh, well, anyway, the uh, garlic, number four, garlic, blueberries, salmon, green tea, dark chocolate, cinnamon, and eggs are brain boosters. And then number five, uh, blueberries with yogurt, great brain booster. And I already talked about India having the highest uh, per capita consumption of curry. Uh, and then I'll go on over here. The nuts, I already covered that, the, the Harvard researchers. And on number 13, waist measurements over 35 inches for women and 40 inches for men a signal of buildup of plaque in the abdominal and cardiac arteries. So uh, that's uh, number 14, seaweed. I talked about that being a cancer fighter. Uh, number 18, prevalence of obesity has doubled in the U.S., uh, tripled, no, doubled in the USA since 1990. And uh, adipose tissue is now viewed as an endocrine organ with its ability to lower the immune system and release cortisol, which elevates uh, blood lipids and cortisol elevates your blood pressure. Uh, okay, and uh, talks about the brain being 80% water. And so if you're dehydrated, you're taking medicine, your, your brain's gonna be foggy, you're gonna be confused. And then number 29 says, hugging decreases stress, lowers blood pressure, produces a sense of well-being, releases endorphins, cytonins, and serotonin in the bloodstream. So it makes you feel good. I, I gave this talk once before and I used that. So I went up to the lady and I said, let me give you a hug. And she pushed me away and said, pig. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but uh, it is good to hug. And uh, so there you go. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'm about finished here. Um, I've already talked about the walking and decreasing your heart disease. Uh, exercise blasts, I've talked about those. Every 30 minutes, stand up, march in place. Uh, magnesium and potassium are vital for heart health and controlling your blood pressure, and those are found in these foods that are on your page there. Uh, 
Also, the muscle loss occurs with aging. At age 50, we start to lose about 1% of our muscle strength every year, but that's reversible. If you get down to the YMCA and you start lifting weights for your quadriceps and your upper extremities, uh, you'll, you'll get stronger. You will get stronger, you can reverse it. And um, uh, also, as we lose muscle, you, you're more prone to fall. And uh, there was a, a, a study, if you know someone who has a fear of falling, it's about 90% accurate that they will fall within the year. So if you know that someone's afraid of falling, tell them to get down to the YMCA and uh, get on a program. They'll, they'll work with them on a balance program and a strengthening program. So that's a preventive tip right there. Um, well, another, number 39, Raw oysters are one of the most nutritious foods on the planet. They are loaded with heart healthy potassium, magnesium, as well as zinc, which is a powerful immune booster. And that's another thing I do when I go to Dorothy Lane. I usually get a couple of oysters, raw oysters. I love them. What? Someone say something? Uh, I didn't hear that. Oh. Oh, what if you don't like them? Well, I love them. I, I can't speak. <laughs> They're great. <laughs> hey, everyone. Um, ju what? Hey, ju just a second, Bob. If you, if you got a question about it, please raise your hand so we can get a mic to you, because the people that are watching on the OLN network, they won't understand or get a chance to hear the question. So if you have a question, just raise your hand. We'll get a mic to you real quick so uh, others who are not here can take advantage of hearing Bob's yeah. answers. Because my, my hearing is not good. I can't hear very well. Okay, another thing, uh, as we get older, uh, we, we need more protein to maintain strength. So uh, eat a lot of, uh, there's some protein supplements you can take, and I do that too. Um, every cell in our body, number 40, every cell in our body has its own vitamin D receptor, which emphasizes its importance for good health. A Cleveland Clinic study found seniors are often uh, low in vitamin D, which exacerbates heart and vascular disease. It also increases risk for diabetes and immune disorder. I take a vitamin D supplement, and uh, I about ever so often I'll uh, go out to the uh, country kitchen, uh, uh, take 63 across 71, there's this uh, truck stop place. I go out there and eat liver and onions. I love it, and it's good for you. Um, that's, I think that's uh, the last one. Uh, well, number 45 I found pretty interesting too. Uh, Penn State and Japanese studies suggest eating more than two servings of mushrooms per week can lower your risk for cognitive decline by 43%. And they're also a big immune booster. So if you like mushrooms, uh, if you get a pizza, say I want mushrooms, double the mushrooms on them, uh, and, and forget about the, the meat. Uh, and last but not least, spinach is a senior citizen superfood. It's loaded with minerals, vitamins, and nitrates, which our body converts into vasodilating nitrous oxide. One study showed that a meal with spinach increased nitrous oxide levels eightfold. The study concluded a meal with spinach can lower the pulse and blood pressure. Other studies show it reduces skin aging and is a breast cancer, is a cancer fighter and immune booster. And uh, so that's, uh, that's it. Uh, now, if you have any questions, why, well, I'll be glad to, uh, can you get him to, hey, they're bringing the mic to you, here it comes. They're gonna bring the mic to you, yeah, okay. Oh, they're gonna give it to her first, all right. My question yeah. is regarding the small baby aspirin. Yeah. My doctor just took me off of small baby aspirin. Baby aspirin? If you have any heart disease, you should take a baby aspirin. But, but if you don't have heart disease, I don't think, I don't found that it's not really that helpful. I've been on baby aspirin ever since I was 50 some, but my doctor just took me off of it, but I didn't ask him why. Yeah, that's why, because they, unless you, ha if you, your heart's probably okay. If you have heart disease, it's smart to take a, a baby aspirin. But I did that too when they came out and they said baby aspirin helps. I took them and then I've stopped. Yeah. 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 I had another question. Okay. Give, yeah. Uh -huh. 
Yes. I had another question on the, you had the uh, red wine. What about white wine? No, r red wine has reservatol, which is a uh, good for the blood vessel lining. Uh, it's like ch dark chocolate and red wine are two vices that you can enjoy, and it helps your, bl your blood vessels a little bit. Yeah. But they also now have come out and said people over 85 probably shouldn't drink, which I don't buy. I still have a glass of wine occasionally or beer, but uh, they, uh, they, they, they say limit it to one, one drink, no more than that. Yeah. Uh, in, in regard to uh, the baby aspirin, yeah. my doctor took me off of baby aspirin because I'm taking other uh, blood thinners and he said an additional baby aspirin would thin my blood too much. Yes. Yeah, if you, uh, you can get your blood too thin, yeah. Yeah, baby aspirin does thin your blood, no doubt about it. Uh, when I was taking aspirin, and I was always cutting myself when I shaved, and uh, I don't do that anymore. Occasionally, but not much, yeah. <laughs> do I have to talk? In? I'm shy. Uh, you say if Bayer is making a crystal aspirin that will dissolve. Dissolve. Repeat it. Have they done it yet? Yeah, the bear, you can buy a Bayer aspirin that's in crystal form and have it by your bed, and it, uh, it dissolves on your tongue and gets into the blood. Yeah, you can. Yeah, the crystal bear. But uh, it's like, like it doesn't even get into your digestive system. You're like sugar. When you eat sugar, it it's, gets into your system right away. Uh, and so uh, honey, if you eat honey, which is a, uh, sugar's bad for you, let's face it. Uh, all the studies show it's bad for us. But if you eat honey, it has essential minerals that our body needs, and you need less of it than sugar to sweeten your food. But uh, it also is higher calorie than, uh, than uh, sugar is. But, so I would recommend if you want to get away from sugar, add honey to your sweet potato or whatever you're eating, and, and uh, that, that's a good way. Because it does have some good minerals. Honey has a lot of minerals in it. Yes, any other? Uh, the one that says, call 911. Yeah. I'm not really shy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when you call 911 and it says, do not lie down, which yeah. is good, get, take a seat by the door, unlock the door. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that, uh, what people do, they call 911, they go get into bed, and uh, uh, lying down when you're having a heart attack is not good. Uh, if you visited someone who's had a heart attack in the hospital, they're sitting at a 45 to 50 degree angle because the heart functions a lot better at that level. When you lie down, it puts a bigger load on your heart. So that's why they say don't lie down because you're just loading up your heart even more. But if you're sitting up, it, it functions better and it's not loading up the heart. So I, I don't know if you've ever done it. If you've ever gone to a hospital, visit someone that's had a heart attack, uh, you always, they're always sitting up. Yeah. Yes. Okay, I have a question that I'd like to bring closer to home. Um, I'm into heart healthy food and I'd like to know what we can do here at Otterbein to have um, at least one option a day for something that's heart healthy. I just came from the, the uh, Great Wave, and they did have a wonderful salad. It was spinach and blueberries and strawberries. Mm -hmm. That's heart healthy to me. Yeah, so that is it would be nice to designate that somehow so the people who are looking for heart healthy food yeah. could be directed to that and yeah. serve at least one entree a day. Yeah, we can all, all encourage, I, I am Marie's very, she's, she's really yeah, good, she, she really it. does a good job, she tries, but uh, I know uh, I get a meal to carry home each, each day, each night, and, uh, and uh, the, uh, the days I come to pick it up, when they have salmon or cod or mackerel or something that's healthy, they're in there cooking hamburgers. People won't, they say, I don't want that, I don't want a hamburger, when right. instead of eating a piece of salmon, they right. prefer the hamburger. And I can't, I just shake my head. Well, some of us would like to eat heart healthy. <laughs> yeah, I know, and that's a good idea. We can encourage, uh, we can encourage Anne-Marie 
And uh, uh, like today, I went to the Great Wave, I ordered salmon, they were out. And she said, we've been selling out. And I said, well, that's a good thing, you order more. And because uh, salmon is one of the best foods that we can eat as seniors. It's got the omega-3, it's got the, uh, the blood, the nitrous oxide, which uh, relaxes the blood vessels, improves the endothelial lining. It's got the, uh, the omega-3, the healthy fat that our body needs. So uh, anyway, those are all, all good things, but uh, the spinach and salmon, uh, th those should be available at all times, I think. Yeah, any, any other questions? Yeah. Yeah. What was the drink that you do every morning? Oh, it's it's called limu. It's uh, it has the, uh, the seaweed drink. It's in a seaweed extract, and it has that fucoidin, which is a, a cancer fighter. Uh, it's a very high antioxidant, and uh, people that that live along the sea coast of Okinawa and Japan, they have that in their diet, and they have very low rates of cancer and heart disease. And uh, so I buy it. It's uh, L I M U. It's kind of expensive, but. Uh, you, you can probably check it out online. L-I-M-U, yeah. Where do you buy it? What? Where do you get it from? Well, I, well I, we, my wife orders it over the computer. Or not, uh, she calls it in or something. I don't know. I don't, I don't do it. She does it. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you can check it on the Internet, Limu, and then if you can't find it, like, ask me, and I'll try to get the address for you. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah. Okay. If you don't like to cook fish and you're not sure you're going to get it done right, you can go to Kroger's and go to their seafood counter and pick out your fresh seafood, and they will put it in a plastic bag with some lemon, maybe some butter, and they zip it up for you, and you take it home, and you can put it in the oven, and they'll tell you how long, or they'll put it in the microwave. And then it slides out of the bag, no smell, nothing. Ah, how about that? It's wonderful. <laughs> Good. All right, anything, anything else? Okay, well. I had a question. Yeah. How important is it to take uh, supplement vitamins when you get really up in age, like me, yeah. over 90? <laughs> Well, I think there's certain vitamins like vitamin D. I would recommend that. I take vitamin D, and I recommend it to anybody because the studies have shown that 50% of seniors, 75 and older, are, have low vitamin D. So that's. But I follow pretty much exactly what you've been talking about: all the good stuff to eat yeah. and drink. I have done that for 20 or 30 years. Good. And I walk regularly and exercise regularly, and it. I am 94, growing oh, wow. up pretty soon to be yeah. 95, and it does help. Yeah. I am a testimony for that. <laughs> well, you're a walking testimony then. <laughs> you, don't, you don't look 95, I'll tell you. And almonds yeah. and all that good stuff for years and years and years. Yeah. Well, it, I th I'm convinced that what we eat it, uh, it's, it's a, uh, food is, is medicine, exercise is medicine. Food can be harmful to you. I mean, like I say, uh, you see these people and, uh, uh, well, and uh, people are on food stamps. I don't want to try to be, you know, putting them down or anything, but they do eat the wrong stuff. They eat a lot of the, you know, like I said, they like Twinkies better than kale, and uh, that's a fact, and they, they don't know. <laughs> Uh, what's good for them? That's a part. That's a part the government or somebody should be teaching them. Say, or else uh, don't don't make it possible for them to buy it. You know, there's some some countries that you. Well, okay. Well, if anyone wants to see my uh, pull-in slide, well, I'll show them. If not, you're free to go. So I'll. If you, Can if I say something yet, Bob? What? <laughs> Can I tell yeah. you or uh, say something or ask you something? Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to be 93 in a couple months, and you know I'm still playing golf. Yeah. But do I have to give up sugar? No. Well, <laughs> I love sweet things, and I've eaten them all my life. 
And I, I never gain weight for, on them. Well, <laughs> the fact that you're exercising and uh, that type of thing, it's, it's probably not, not that bad. But if, you're, if you aren't exercising and you eat sugar, it's, it's, uh, it's not a good thing. I mean, you can Google it and find out sugar's not good for senior citizen. Okay. Yeah, I won't give a lecture on anything, but. And I so, wish I had known about that, those Olympics earlier so yeah. I could have taken part in the, yeah. in the golf section. Yeah. Well, and that's good. You keep being physically active. Okay, if anyone wants to see that, uh, my Poland slides when I competed in the World Senior Games, you're free to watch it. Otherwise, I won't be offended if you leave, but uh, um, thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad you came. I, I it was a nice turnout, and you had some good questions. So it was, that was good. So you want to sh show this? You want to forget? Yeah, everything? just a second, Bob. Uh, this is for the benefit of those who are watching online, on uh, all in. Bob's mentioned a lot about the pamphlets that everybody has in here. Unfortunately, though, if you're at home watching, you don't have the pamphlet. So you're if at home and you're watching there will be pamphlets of Bob's handouts in the program office. Yeah. So uh, come by and pick it up or give them a call and they'll put them in, uh, in our office mail for you. So I just want to make sure we got that out before we left and shut off all in because it's going to go away in about five minutes. Okay, so. thanks. That's great, thanks. Well, anyway, if you want to see these slides, it takes about five minutes and then uh, if, you, if you want to go, I won't be offended. Okay, Bob's going to flip those on and I'll kind of cover them for you. Jerry Burns converted these from my computer onto a, uh, so they can be shown here. So thank you, Jerry. We'll see if they work. Anyway, I was there from, uh, uh, I came back 1st of April. And uh, this, this is the tour in Poland uh, where the event was. You had to tap it each time to make them go forward. It's not going to be automatic. Well, this is uh, on the, the uh, trains. Uh, their trains over there are really great. I, I took the trains. I have an exercise band that I use to exercise, to exercise while I'm on the train or in an airplane, and that helps reduce the chance of getting blood clots and uh, keeps, uh, keeps you strong. Okay, go ahead. This is a taxi that took us around Warsaw. Uh, we had, uh, 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 he's about 30 years old. You want to flip to the next one? And uh, this is my uh, uh, niece and son-in-law at our hotel next. And uh, in the morning, this is a taxi driver again. He pulls out, it was 9 o'clock in the morning, he pulls out this bottle of vodka. He said, he said, I just want you to know that the Polish vodka is much better than Russian vodka. And he poured us all a glass. And I, we said, well, we don't care for it. He said, well, I'll drink. <laughs> he drank the vodka and drove us around Warsaw, Poland. So, <laughs> And this is the uh, ghetto. Uh, you probably heard about that, the Warsaw Ghetto. When Hitler attacked uh, Poland, uh, Poland had the highest population of Jews in the world. Warsaw was a city with the most Jews in the world. So this was what Hitler was zeroing in on. You know, he wanted to eliminate the Jews. And this is some of what's left. Uh, they, they shipped out, I think, uh, I think it was like 20, or uh, no, a couple of million uh, Jews from there. They locked them into this compound area. They put wire around them, had police dogs so they couldn't get out. But it was pretty terrible, and some of them were happy to get on the, the train to uh, uh, Treblinka to go to the death camp. They told, they told them they were going to work camp, and they were fighting to get on the train to get out of the horrible existence that they had there at that, uh, at that uh, ghetto. Uh, thousands, hundreds of thousands of them died from disease and, uh, while they were there waiting to go. Okay, next. Well, this is the, uh, the, the, uh, the good King Winslow. You've heard about him. Maybe this is his summer palace. It was back in the 1700s. And uh, 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 what's her name? Uh, the, she was the uh, queen of Russia. Um, I've forgotten her name now. But anyway, she, what? Catherine. Catherine, okay. Yeah, Catherine. And uh, she overthrew her husband, who was the king. He was a he had a drinking problem, and uh, and she she was the one who was famous for all of her mistresses. She had the uh, the military generals and admirals, and that's how she was able to 
overthrow her husband because all these guys were uh, favoring her. But uh, anyway, she came to this palace and spent the summer with the uh, King Winslow, and he, he fell in love with her, but she was sort of fickle. She took off, and, and uh, she had many, many uh, lovers during her reign, 30-year reign. Is, and this, this is uh, the uh, tower in uh, uh, Warsaw. Uh, Donald Trump is trying to buy that right now. He wants to buy it and convert it into uh, uh, luxury apartments. But the, the, uh, that was built by uh, uh, the, the communists during the communist take. And you see that line up there? Uh, uh, Joseph Stalin died. He, he was building this for the Polish people. And that line in the middle, you can see, that's where he, he died. And they're going to cap it off there. And then they decided to go ahead and finish it. But uh, it's, it's a museum. This is Old Town Warsaw. It was bombed out pretty much during the war, but they rebuilt it just like it was. And, uh, okay. And the pierogi, that's the, one of the foods, favorite foods of the, the Polish people. And it's a dumpling type thing with uh, eggplant or chicken in it. It's very, very tasty. And uh, we were getting ready to go into the little store there. That just so shows you the downtown uh, Warsaw. Okay, next. That's the old city wall that's still standing. Next. And uh, a monument during the, uh, the Poles rebelled against the German occupation, and they were very effective in fighting the Germans, actually. Next. Uh, this is on the train. Uh, their trains are wonderful. Uh, we talk about being green, having green energy here. We're not even close to the people in Europe. We're, we, we burn more fossil fuel in, in a day than they do in a week. Okay, next. Uh, I, I, we were exercising on the train. I was doing some pull-ups, and my uh, uh, David, my uh, niece's husband, he was exercising. Okay, uh, that's next. That's just the train station. This is a guy that uh, uh, he was a, an Olympic vaulter, a regular Olympic vaulter for the United States. He's a, he's like 60 years old, but I've met him at several other meets, and it's just uh, fun to meet people that you've met before. Okay, next. Uh, this this uh, family, my niece is a, a chairwoman of the uh, Cleveland Catholic Charities for Ukraine immigrants, and uh, she has uh, spent time over there. Just when, after the war started, she spent time helping process the uh, uh, the Ukrainian immigrants, and she has adopted this family, and uh, they're coming over. That little girl's name is Carolina. She's eight years old, and that's her mother. And their dog, uh, the uh, the grandmother and the dog uh, took uh, Carolina left when the shelling started. Their house was destroyed, so they they are now. Just last week, they came to the United States. My niece has them at, at their house, taking care of them. Okay, next. This is the the family in the back. Beside me is his name is uh, uh, Sasha, and then Irina is the grandmother. That's the one right there in the middle in the white coat. She's a nurse, and uh, she's going to take testing when she gets here so she can get certified to be a nurse. And uh, uh, Sasha, he's a computer geek, and he won't have any trouble finding a job. Uh, he speaks very good English. Uh, the grandmother speaks very good English. A uh, little girl, uh, Carolina, I was talking to uh, her father, and I said, Carolina's really a good little athlete. and. Uh, she turned around and smiled. So she understands what I was talking about, but uh, we were at a park and she was climbing on stuff and running around. But uh, they have, it took like a year to process their paperwork to get them in the United States. So we do have an immigration law, uh, but it's, it's, not, it's enforced every place except at our southern border, which I find very unfair. You know, some people go through the the, obey the law, do it right, and then, uh, then we have millions of other people just come running across the border. And uh, I, th I think that's uh, very unfair. Okay, next. Uh, the, uh, Copernicus, he was the, uh, uh, the uh, ast astronomist who told the world, hey, uh, the Earth isn't the center of the world, of the universe, and, uh, and uh, things aren't going around us. Everybody's moving a little bit. Up until that time, they thought the, 
that the uh, earth is just sitting there and everything is moving around us. Okay, next. Uh, the Gingerbread Museum, uh, that's been in business since 1400, the same recipe, and it's a museum, and I bought some gingerbread and brought it back to different, uh, gave some to different people, Sunday school class, I gave everybody a sample. But uh, it's very, very good, and the museum is kind of fun to go through. So, uh, and this is touring the town where I, I was. Okay, next. Uh, and this is the uh, Church of the Holy Spirit, uh, which is the center of the, the uh, town. Uh, next. And uh, the river. Next. And uh, uh, the, the Copernicus Hotel. Uh, we had a party for uh, the athletes. The, uh, nice, the United States Track and Field had a party for the athletes, and that's the, where we were. And that was me getting ready to vault. Next. Uh, okay, I'm just finding my pull. Next. Uh, there, there were events going on. Okay, next. Uh, next. I'm getting ready for my first vault. Next. And then, uh, okay, next. Next. It's just, I'm flying through these. Oh, this, oh, you <laughs> should. Uh, that was my first vault. I did, I did five feet three, which, like I say, I, uh, uh, like ten years ago I was seven foot vaulter. Now I'm five feet three, so I'm losing losing my steam going downhill. But uh, that's the way. I, I guess that's aging, right? Okay, that's my niece uh, who is in charge of the Cleveland uh, Charities and her husband. And next, and. Uh, my, my name was on the board there when your time came up. It was its big time. That was the, uh, okay, that's it. That's all I'm going to show. But uh, the, the Poland is, is really an a up-and-coming country. Um, they now have, uh, they're NATO. They, they have purchased, uh, you know, Trump got on the NATO members for not paying their, they're supposed, every NATO country is supposed to spend 2% of their gross national product on their military so they can, we can have a strong NATO. None of them were doing it, and Trump got on them. But Poland, they spend 4%. They, got, they have a military. We have an air base and an army base there now. And Poland is a, could fight. They could fight. Uh, they're a real, probably the second best ally we have in NATO used to be France and Britain. But uh, uh, I would say Poland could probably whip them. Uh, they have the latest in tanks, and they're giving a lot of money to money to the uh, Ukrainians. Plus, they're giving them a lot of supplies. They're training the Ukrainians. So we, which, uh, uh, just from a geopolitical point of view, for your own education, uh, Poland is not a uh, weak sister like they used to be. They're very, they're a military power. Okay. That's it. So I hope. Uh, but uh, Poland, Poland. I'll give you one more thing. Poland is ninety nine point seven percent Catholic, and they're uh, uh, they're they're still family oriented. It's it was kind of refreshing to see they didn't. Uh, you know they're just a, a good strong country. When you have good families, uh, you're going to be strong. Okay. Yeah. What? What? What's the crime rate? Well, oh, very, they don't have, uh, that's the other thing. I never saw any homeless people. I never saw any beggars. And the crime, uh, you can go out and walk at night in the cities. And there doesn't seem to be a problem. Yeah. Pretty Half good. Of Poland, what? Half of Ukraine, the people. Yeah. Have yeah, you, the Poland has been taken in a lot of Ukrainians. Yeah. yeah. They've been good about it. All right. Thanks for coming. See ya.